Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today, today is dyno day for the Flip RX. It is about, it's about to be eight o'clock in the morning and uh, my appointment is at 10. Now I got out here and I realized that uh, I needed to fix the O-ring um, drain plug on the radiator, which I just did. And now I'm bleeding the cooling system out to make sure there's no air pockets in here. And uh, so far, so far it's uh it's looking good the car is warmed up already bottom hose is nice and hot and if you guys don't remember i don't think i even recorded it but i did put a 10 gauge in here and uh it is at 173 as of right now i did take this car to alignment like a month ago and the car overheated after 10 miles so i don't i'm not really too sure what was wrong with it it has a stock ecu in there um obviously the the turbo stuff is all in there as well but um when i got home i wrapped the down pipe wrapped the dumb tube and i punched some holes in the thermostat hopefully that helps i haven't driven it since uh since those modifications so we were supposed to tow the car but my brother disabled the van and i it doesn't turn on so uh, i didn't get to go pick up the trailer yesterday so that forced me to drive it there 70 plus miles and i'm crossing fingers we're not gonna have any issues leo is here with me today he is going to be the backup vehicle just in case if anything goes wrong we have all of our tools and all the extra and spare parts and stuff but if i have to leave the car somewhere we have a secondary car to mob in so i'm crossing fingers everything goes well so because we got to drive the car to the dyno i am forced to run 91 in this car now i'm not certain if i'm gonna run e85 anymore because of you know the inconvenience but um we just got some 91 topped off yeah um 250 was the highest 251 was the highest the water temp got now i got the water temp gauge in here because i wasn't sure if this was correct because obviously my rpm was all whacked out but hey it started working when i was driving <laughs> but 250 is way way too high i mean 220 220 is like way past my fail safe which is like set to 210 usually so i was driving at 220 ish for a cool minute but we just got off a giant hill right there and 250 was the highest it got so i pulled over water and water wetter is what it has in here and um you have a gallon and a half of coolant yeah. so i'm thinking about just draining the water and water wetter and then just running coolant and i have a bleeder right here somewhere to uh bleed it out we're not even halfway there and uh car's running pretty hot we'll figure some out Thirsty. He is thirsty. All right, guys. So we just made it to red zone, and the car car seems to just be running hot. It was like 240 degrees, the most I've seen it come in here. But we made it here, and uh, before we slap it up on the dyno, we're gonna swap out these injectors. Guy hooked it up with some 1600s and uh, we did pump E85. I was just going to stick to 91, but because we are running these injectors, I might as well. You know what I mean? Just just go E85. So right now I'm going to let this cool down a little bit, pull out those um, injectors, slap these on. So we got all the injectors installed and uh, Guy reminded me that these injectors needed a resistor box. Now I don't have a resistor box. I had a block off plug since I was running an OBD2 injector, but um shout out to guy he provided me a resistor box off a unused harness and pretty much just clipped it off and this was the plug that i was using as a dead plug there and uh pretty much just connected it in and uh about to hook this up jeremy is on the phone with guy on the laptop setting up the basement for this so i just finished wiring up a gm3 bar map sensor i'm not too sure what spring is in the wastegate so i'm running this to make sure that the map sensor is capable of you know reading over uh 10 point whatever 2 psi that the stock map sensor is rated for so i got a gm3 bar wiring diagram right here um a is ground b is signal and c is 5 volt and if you look right here it is labeled on the plug itself a b and c so this is pretty much ready to go this is not your typical like Honda, you know, 
throttle body uh, map sensor this is like a remote like mounted um, map sensor um, from GM but because OBD zero already has their map sensor sitting on the firewall um, the harness for that for the EF is already inside the car which I snipped off um, somewhere this one right here and the vacuum line is already on the inside as well so all I want to do is just hook up the vacuum to the map sensor which is this port right here and I'm just going to tuck it away and then we'll take care of all that when we get home right now we need to get this thing on the dyno so we've been running into a couple of dilemmas and uh, we're trying to sort it all out so we did the um, injectors which were these right here 1600s these are kind of like the precision 1600s with the resistor box after we installed these we did the three bar map sensor and then Jeremy guy made a map to turn the car on and the car just wouldn't act normal so uh, we were trying to die the issue we thought it was maybe a jumper harness because the car was tweaking out as far as like um, power in and out goes so we swapped the jumper harness to a different one that didn't seem to fix the issue we swapped three different ECUs that didn't fix the issue we took out the GM three bar map sensor that didn't fix the issue and uh, injectors were probably the last thing that we tried swapping out to see if maybe the issue but um we tried swapping in a different set of 1600 cc injectors but these hats these the head of this was too short so the o-ring wasn't really seating correctly so now we downsized to 440s just to rule it out to see if the car would turn on with these right here so big shout out to guy for taking the time out of his day to come out here and um you know situate the car with me and he he doesn't want to call it a day until this car is done so i truly appreciate that thank you jeremy for waiting on the other end um for us to situate all this before we get this thing on the dyno so now that because we've gone back to a smaller size injector we're going to keep it pump gas at this point i kind of just want this thing to be tuned um conservatively or even low horse probably don't matter to me i just want things to be tuned just so we can get it out of here and uh obviously once it's out the dyno i'm gonna put it for sale so um i just finished the injectors they are wired in with the correct pigtails and uh we're about to see if this thing will kind of fix our issues Sometimes dyno sessions don't go as planned, um, no matter how much we prepared for it. So the car seems to be cutting out like 7,000 RPM and um, he was saying that the spring might be a small spring in it as well, so it's not building enough boost, 
I bought a, I brought a boost controller just in case, but uh, right now we're really just short. Uh, but right now we're really trying to sort out, um, I guess like an ignition cut or something. That guy was saying that it's cutting out because it's um, not revving up past 7k. So uh, right now we're just we're just trying to diag this car a little bit more and um, see where it takes us. Um, the only thing is uh, it does get hot after cool, so gotta let it cool off a little bit before we make another one. But uh, yeah, right now um, guys just trying to find a different ECU to try on real quick to see if the ECU might be the problem. But um, we'll keep you guys updated. So apparently the car is making under seven pounds and uh, the car did two, 210 horsepower right there. So I did bring a boost controller, just kind of stuck it up right here in the front because I didn't want to take off my bumper. And uh, guys just turned that a few times. Gonna give it another rip and see what it does. Did it actually go up this time in RPR or no? Yeah. Nice. Nice. So guys, unfortunate day. Um, distributor more than likely took a dump, and uh, guy went through all of his inventory of distributors, and everything is gutted for cop kit. So he doesn't have a distributor to slap on, and I appreciate guy for the effort because he always try to get the car situated uh, then and there. But in this case, I didn't bring any spare parts because I have cop distributors as well too and he doesn't have any parts to try to fix the ignition issue so we can't do anything with that but um we're we're pretty much done with the session today with this car i'm honestly i'm honestly over it you know what i mean like it's not a bad setup it's not a bad car it turns on watch it runs and drives like it should but the tune needs to be touched up once the ignition situation is obviously situated so um i told guys i don't want to risk driving this car home in a temperature that it is kicking out right now so i'm trying to like think of a solution what it is that i want to do do i want to sell the car incomplete the way it is right now like needing a retune and another distributor or do i fix all of the issues which i don't even know what the issue is yet as far as like why the car is running super hot fix the issue and then sell the car i'm over this car this car was just something i put together because i bought the car for the hood car came attached to the hood and i had everything to put into it so i'm, I'm at a standstill with this car right now but the plan is right now is 
I'm gonna be hopping in with Leo and we're gonna head back home. I'm gonna leave the car here at the shop and really figure out a solution for it and then um, come back and situate it or come back and meet the seller and sell it or I, I, I really don't know. So um, I gotta clean all my stuff, take all my personal belongings with me with Leo and uh, the car is gonna stay here in the shop until, until, until I come back or if I sell the car. So that's pretty much it for uh, today's video, guys. Um, I wish it would have uh, turned out a lot better, but dyno sessions are always unexpected. So um, yeah, back to the drawing board. We'll figure out what we're gonna do with this car. We'll update you guys later down the road. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did a little bit, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Big shout out to Guy, big shout out to Jeremy for taking the time out of your Sunday to help me situate this car. So if you guys want to stick around and see what the verdict is with this, whether the car is still going to be fixed on the channel or be sold, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, shout out to Leo for coming with me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.